guys. Channel. My name is Ian McNaughton Figgy here. We're doing Ian Review Sports coming off the 2021 Styrian Grand Prix in Austria. Uh, so pretty much, again, I don't know how well you guys can read the board. Uh, this is the leaderboard from today's race. This is what the driver standings look like after today's race. Here are kind of my notes slash takeaways uh, from the race itself. It was a pretty good race, not somewhat eventful, not totally eventful, but still a pretty good race. Uh, so obviously the leaderboard, Max Verstappen won, Lewis Hamilton second, Bottas third, that's your podium finishes. And then Sergio Perez fourth, Lando Norris fifth, Carlos Sainz sixth, Charles Leclerc seventh, Lance Stroll eighth, Fernando Alonso ninth, and Yuki Tsunoda tenth. That's your top ten. And then finally, Raikkonen, Vettel, Ricardo, Akon, Giovinazzi, Schumacher, Latifi, Mazepin, Russell, and Gasly. Uh, Russell and Gasly obviously DNF'd in the race, so they didn't score any points, scoring finishes. Um, interesting mix of drivers throughout the standings. Uh, probably I, I'm most happy for the Ferraris. I would say the Ferraris because the Ferraris got points. They had a much better race compared to France. And then probably most disappointed for Russell and then Gasly. I mean, I'm disappointed in Gasly a bit because he's had a really good season and he didn't deserve to have uh, a DNF because it wasn't really his fault. He got caught up in damage. We'll talk about that later on. Um, but then obviously Russell hasn't had a points finish in his career. He's made the Williams car look really good all season up to eighth at one point during the race before he had to retire. So, I mean, disappointing for sure. Uh, if you if you were a Williams fan and disappointed if you were a Pierre Gasly fan. Now, the driver standings haven't changed a whole lot. Verstappen is still first with 156 points this season. Hamilton is second with 138. Uh, Sergio Perez, 96. Lando Norris has 86. Uh, that's going to be a really close battle between third and fourth. That, that's going to be really exciting to see how that plays out for the rest of the season. Uh, Valtteri Bottas has 74 points this season. Uh, the Ferraris are eight points separated uh, with 58 points for Leclerc, 50 points for Sainz. Gasly still has 37 points. He's still eighth in the driver standings. Uh, Daniel Ricciardo ninth with 34 points. And Sebastian Vettel with 30 points. He's rounding out the top 10. So there's your top 10 for driver standings right now. And then finally, the rest of the, the standings go Alonzo 19, Stroll 14, Alonzo with 19 points, Stroll with 14 points, Akon with 12 points, Zenoda with 9 points, both the Alphas, Raikkonen and Giovinazzi with a point each, and then Russell, Schumacher, Mazepin, the TP all have no points. So let's talk about the actual race today. Uh, I'll give you a few notes. I also have a few notes. Uh, where is it here? Uh, I have a few notes in my book here uh, that I can pull out and I can talk about. But, so we'll start with the first lap. Gasly makes contact with Leclerc on turn one. Um, Leclerc got a, a little bit kind of trigger happy, shall I say. Um, and then Gasly spins Giovinazzi on two, turn three. So the problem with, with, with Gasly's race, which was a very short race, is that he, he got, he got hit from Leclerc on the first lap. He couldn't really do anything about it. It was just them battling. And then Gasly's car lost a whole bunch of power uh, after that. Like you can see in the replay, he just went from like 100 to zero pretty much really quick uh, as he was going up the hill, going into turn three. And as a result, he makes contact with Antonio Giovinazzi. He spins Giovinazzi on turn three. And Gasly would eventually retire due to suspension damage. You, you saw him driving into the pit lane, um, car would not even, uh, tires were punctured. He was done. They tried to salvage it, but he was essentially done. There wasn't any coming back from that. Um, that was really the, the big thing to start the race. I don't think there was anything illegal done by anybody. I think it was just got guys battling and that's the result. Someone got hurt, not literally, just someone, you know, came out worse than somebody else, and that's what happened to Pierre Gasly. So I, I, I don't have any issues with it. I think it's just racing, and that's what happens. It stinks, especially for Gasly, who's had a really good season. I think he's had six 
six point finishes, I want to say, six finishes in the top 10 this season. Like, he's had a really good season with Alpha Tauri, and just for whatever reason, it hasn't worked. A um, couple of not major things. I, I think I marked them in the book here, but nothing really major between that and Russell. Um, I mean, I, I don't have a whole lot here. Um, yeah, Norris gave up third place early on uh, to try and contest with Ferrari rather than comp- contest with Bottas and Perez. So that's why they gave up the spots to Perez and Bottas. Um, I don't know if McLaren had issues with their car today. I don't they, I, like temperature. They talked about overheating on the broadcast. Daniel Ricciardo, I'll talk about him later on. He, he had an eh race. Norris was not that I mean, he was fine for Lando Norris. He finished in the top five. Like, he had a solid race. It's just the cars I don't think were that great this weekend. Uh, not as good as maybe last weekend uh, when they had a really good race in France. Um, yeah, R- Russell got high as eighth, and then he started having his issues. So he pits on lap 27, and it's an 18.3-second stop. Just atrocious stop. Um they were blaming it on uh, on the power unit. There was an issue with it. If, I think Russell made two more stops after that to try and fix whatever problem they were having. Wasn't helpful. Wasn't useful. Uh, he retires on lap 39, missing out on points once again. Basically, after so he did his original pit stop. He was at 18.3 seconds. He stopped again, got down to like 18th, and he was done. He wasn't getting any points. There wasn't really a reason for Williams to race again. It was more just pick, you know, pick your battles. They'll save it for next week. You got another race in Austria. Why fight your battle here? Fight it next week when maybe your car is better and maybe you can contest for points again. Who knows? Um, Perez has a slow 4.8 second stop. So everybody's pitting between about lap 25 and lap 30. Um Everybody's going for hard tires, essentially, whether you're on mediums or soft. Uh, I think Reichner was the only one who started on hard, so he didn't pit when everybody else did. But pretty much everybody was pitting from about lap 25 to about lap 30. It happens really fast because Austria is a fast track. It's a small track, so the laps go by quicker. Um, Paris has a slow 4.8 second pit stop, and Bottas undercuts him and gets ahead, uh, stays ahead for the rest of the race. That's why... In the leaderboard, Bottas finishes third today, and Paris finishes fourth. I mean, that's just an uncharacteristic pit stop from Red Bull for Sergio Perez. It's a tough break, and as a result, Bottas takes advantage of it, and he gets his own podium. Um, I, th- I thought there was also a lot of good pit stop times today. Verstappen had a, a 2.0. He had two-second pit stop. That's more the Red Bull kind of pit stop than the 4.8 for Paris. Hamilton and Stroll each had 2.2 second pit stops. Norris and Sonoda had 2.3 second pit stops. Really good, some good pit stops outside of, you know, the major catastrophes like Russell, Perez, you know, 2.2.0 is really good, 2.2, 2.3. Still a lot of pit stops, I thought, today. Uh, Leclerc clips Reikkonen's front wing on lap 45. Uh, Raikkonen's upset, which gave us a really good soundboard of him swearing, and they had to bleep that out. So that was cool. Probably the most personality he's shown all season. Uh, so you'll love to see that. And then uh, finally, Raikkonen passes Vettel for 11th on lap 69. And some old memories came back with, you know, the once Ferrari teammates, I believe. Just Raikkonen and Vettel have been racing each other for like the last 10 years even more, I think. So, I mean, good memories coming back with those two guys battling it out. Um, Lewis Hamilton and Mercedes kind of in a weird position where they were, Hamilton was in second place. He could have tried to do to Verstappen um, what Verstappen did to him last week, try and go for another pit stop, get some pressure tires and try and make it up. The problem is that if he took another pit stop, I think he was about eight, 10 seconds back from Verstappen, if he went for another pit stop, it would have given Verstappen incentive to go make his own pit stop, get new tires for him. Um, it, it wouldn't have quite worked out, but it makes you wonder if Mercedes did that. 
Are they closer? Are we talking about a different race? Uh, instead, Lewis pits on lap 70. He gets fastest lap because he puts on uh, fresh soft tires. And uh, that's essentially the race. Verstappen holds on to win. Bottas undercuts Perez thanks to a bad pit stop by Red Bull. That's why he finishes third. Lewis is Lewis started in second. He finished in second. Um, yeah, Red Bull misses on a double podium because of a slow pit stop. I wrote down will Mercedes struggle next week. So it's funny when talking about Mercedes and saying that, you know, finishing second and third isn't a good week for them because for any other team, it would be a great week, but because it's Mercedes, they're, you know, held to a higher standard than everybody else. So seeing them finish second and third makes everybody wonder. I, I, I don't know. I just feel like they, they're very sluggish right now. They haven't won a race in four attempts. I don't know what's next for them. I, I, I'm guessing they're going to struggle again next weekend. And by struggle, I mean they're going to be, you know, maybe 20 points. The Hamilton's going to be 20 points back of Verstappen in the driver standings. I, I, I just, I, I feel like Red Bull has Mercedes number right now, especially at the Red Bull ring, which is Red Bull's home track, obviously, because it's a Red Bull ring. So what we might see with, you know, the British Grand Prix coming up is that they're pro Mercedes is probably going to try their best this upcoming weekend for this, you know, the second race in as many weekends in Austria. They're going to try their best, but they're probably not going to be upset if they lose the race. Uh, and then, you know, pick their battles in the upcoming races where you go to Britain, you know, you got, you got Russia and Monza and all the, you know, Belgium coming up, um, Hungary throughout August, like you have all of those races. So you're probably going to take your chances there and hope that you do well, but I, I'm sure Mercedes is probably going to struggle again next week. And we're going to do the same. I, I'm sure the race next week is going to be, relatively similar to the race we just had this past weekend we just had today uh great race for ferrari leclerc probably could have finished higher if not for his lap one chaos where he had the pit after making contact with gasly uh damaged his front wing so he probably could have finished higher in the race but still um six and seven finished for uh for leclerc and science i i i'd be thrilled if i was ferrari considering how bad they were in france and then they had a really good race in austria you'll love to see it Hopefully it continues for them. I hope they have another good race next week. Really good stuff from Ferrari. I, I, I'm happy with their race. Um, like you just feel, but if you're Ferrari, you just have to feel better for this race compared to last week. You know, now momentum's good. Hopefully it turns into a top five finish next week. That that could happen for sure. Um, yeah, tough luck for Gasly and Russell, both of whom should have finished in the top 10. Um, just Gasly getting wrecked and then car losing power he couldn't really have done anything uh russell just bad pit stop probably overheating the brakes car probably wasn't meant to finish in the top 10 maybe it will next week it just wasn't russell's day it wasn't meant to be which that stinks um i put down good race for kimi right and he finished 11th um he 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 had a good race, I thought. He took advantage of Gasly and Russell getting a DNF. I mean, he's he struggled this season. Giovinazzi, I also put down, probably pretty, probably finishes uh, higher with a better lap one. But they're alpha. They're not going to be competing for top ten finishes every every year, um, every race even. And yet, you know, I thought they were all right. Um, Good race for them. Probably need to improve qualifying, but good race nevertheless. Um, and, and you love to see Raikkonen going for a pass on Vettel at the very end. You at least like that they're being competitive and they're still racing from beginning to end. They're not taking it easy. They're not just comfortable with 12th. They're going for 11 too, which you, you like to see that. Um, what's wrong with Ricardo and his car? Uh, poor quality. Engine issues. I, I, I question M McLaren, McLaren's car with Ricardo. I don't know how to describe it. I don't know what's wrong with Daniel Ricardo. There's no reason for him to be finishing 13th. There's no reason for him to be starting 12th, 13th. Ricardo's better than that. The car is better than that. They need to figure it out. I, I have no idea how to fix it or what you do to improve it.
You got to improve it, though. There's no reason for Ricardo to not be in the top 10 every weekend. There just isn't, especially with Gasly out with a DNF. No reason for, you know, Ricardo and McLaren to be that low. No reason for them to be starting behind Williams. No, no reason whatsoever. Um, and then finally, the last thing I put down here, uh, Gunter Steiner gave Nikita Mazepin a spinning top for his birthday, which was, is awesome. It, it's funny. It's hilarious. Steiner doesn't care. It, he, he couldn't care less. It's Mazepin. He probably doesn't enjoy uh, being his boss because I'm sure Mazepin's just a nightmare every race weekend. So you get a spinning top because you spin a lot. That's why. You deserve it. Um, that's the 2021. I put 2020. I meant to put 2021. I wish I recognized that at the beginning. Anyways, that's the video. Thank you very much for watching. Hope you enjoyed. Uh, be sure to like this video and subscribe to the channel for more. Uh, we'll have some, uh, some rugby reviews here coming up. And we're going to be doing a podcast later tonight on the Stanley Cup preview. Our Stanley Cup pre preview. Uh, between Montreal and Tampa Bay. So be on the lookout for that too. Thank you very much for watching. Peace out.